It's concerning that the primary cause for poor air quality in Ireland is man-made. The way we heat our homes here in this country and the fumes from our car exhausts are directly damaging our health. But how exactly is this air pollution damaging? To find out more, I've come to London. The UK has some of the poorest air quality in Europe, with around 40,000 deaths a year attributed to air pollution. A shocking joint report from the Royal College of Physicians and the Royal College of Pediatrics has shown the dangerous impact air pollution is having on health. Professor Jonathan Grigg is a leading UK paediatrician studying the effects of air pollution on human health and is a co-author of the report. No one's death certificate ever says that they died from exposure to air pollution. How do we know it's actually killing people? It's true that the death certificates don't say that, but it doesn't, they don't also say that you died from poor diet or from uh, poverty. And I think we should regard air pollution in the same light. It's a toxin that we're exposed to day in, day out, and the effects on disease and premature mortality are, if you like, the cumulative effects of exposures over long periods of time. How do these particles actually affect our health? They're having effects across the whole life course. We know that air pollution exposure of mothers has redu reduces birth weight in their children. We see reduced lung function in children living in the high air areas of high pollution. It causes new onset asthma, so it actually causes asthma in some children. If they have asthma, it makes it worse on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a worrying signals about the effects of air pollution on the brain. In older individuals, cognitive decline appears to be accelerated. And it also sets up some of the effects that we see in adulthood, effects on the cardiovascular and respiratory system, which of course leads to major effects in later life and is the reason for the increased mortality that we know is associated with breathing in particles and nitrogen dioxide. And how can breathing in particles and breathing in gases affect anything other than the lungs? How does it affect us systemically? Well, if you think about smoking, we know that uh, breathing in cigarette smoke has effects across the whole body in causing cancer, um, both in the lung and in other organs and in children having effects. And it's just the same sort of process that uh, we're seeing with air pollution. At the Blizzard Institute, under Professor Griggs' supervision, Lee Co is conducting research with the aim of reducing the exposure of vulnerable children to air pollution. The only way to do this, without an overall reduction in emissions, is to determine where and when throughout the day peak exposures occur, so that these can then be avoided. Participants like Hamid, who suffer from asthma, are given a personal air monitor with a GPS to create an individual exposure profile. Tell me then about this research project that you were doing. So the UK limit is, is the green um, line, which shows that's where we think the limit is supposed to be. So this big spike here, what did we think that might be? Um, that's when um, I have break time and lunch. And you're going outside into the schoolyard here? Yeah. Is this when you're going home? Yeah. And you obviously have to go outdoors for those too, don't you? Yeah. And who do you think is making it all? Um, well, it's the people who make cars and start fires and stuff like that. And Hamid, I suppose you don't drive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have more control in cars, but I don't drive. As a mother, I feel really sad. My generation, fair enough, maybe we are all damaged. But for them, they're still young. We should think about them. And so, and you walk a different way now, do you? Yeah. And tell me about why you walk a different way. Because there's, the way that I used to walk was too polluted. I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't I just couldn't walk there. It was, it was just too much. And what's the new way like? Uh, it's more, it's less polluted. Um, and can you feel better then? Yeah. That's good. Hamid's peak personal exposure was mostly as a result of roadside diesel emissions. By choosing alternative routes or staying indoors, he's able to avoid high episodes of air pollution and reduce his personal exposure, which improves his health. Jonathan, do you think that the roadside levels of exposure are actually relevant for health? There are basically two types of air pollution that we're exposed to. One is a sort of background level, which is the same across the whole city, and you can capture that by one or two 
monitors, uh, for example, on a high building. Um, then we've got that second air pollution, which is exposure to freshly generated pollutants from the roads. They're much more difficult to capture because uh, we can't monitor individual exposure very easily over long periods of time. And that effect is, is very localized, highly localized. So within about 150 meters or so, the effects of the road fall back to uh, background levels. But we all travel on roads. Some of us live on roads or go to school along roads. And to understand the health effects, you certainly have to understand how your population is exposed to that component of air pollution. Recent modelling of the air pollution in London found that as much as 40% comes from diesel vehicles. With Ireland having one of the highest percentages of diesel ownership in the EU, could we be sleepwalking into a health crisis?